So here we have an aluminum rod. It has a square cross section with a particular length and also a particular edge length. Our first job is to find the resistance between the ends of that aluminum rod. Now we have learned that the resistance, <clears throat> pardon me, of a conducting wire is equal to a constant known as the resistivity multiplied by the length and then divided by the cross sectional area. We have drawn a picture of this aluminum rod. We can see that the cross section indeed is that of a square. And we recall that the cross-sectional area then would actually be whatever the area of that square is. And that would just be the length times the width, x times x. This gives us x squared. So we can actually rewrite this resistance equation as follows. We can say the resistance of this aluminum wire is equal to the resistivity times the length and then divided by x squared. And then at this point, we simply have to plug in the known values. They gave us the length and the value of x. What we also need is the resistivity. Now for aluminum, the resistivity is given by this value right here, symbolized by rho with units of ohm meters. So we would just go ahead now and plug in the resistivity for aluminum, 2.75 times 10 to the minus eighth. And again, this is ohm meters multiplied by the length, which was given as 1.3 meters, and then divided by the edge length squared. The edge length was given in millimeters. It was 5.2 millimeters. So we actually must be careful here and change that to meters. So we'll do 5.2 times 10 to the minus three. That will now be in meters. Don't forget to square that. You can punch that into your calculator. And when you do so, the resistance will equal 0.00. .00 one, three, two. As far as the units are concerned, we can see that in the denominator, we have a meter squared. In the numerator, we also have meters squared because we're multiplying those meters. They'll cancel out and that will leave us with the unit of just ohms right there. So the final answer here will have a unit of ohms. This is the correct answer to part A. We go back and look at part B now. It wants the diameter of a cylindrical copper rod with a length of 1.3 meters. And importantly, the resistance will be the same as that of the aluminum. So this time it's a cylindrical rod. So we've gone down here and have drawn a cylindrical rod. We'll still use the same equation. We know the resistance again is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Now, of course, in this case, the cross-sectional area will be the area of a circle since our rod is cylindrical shaped. We know that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. But this question wants us to find the diameter, so it would be useful to express the area in terms of diameter. Now, of course, we also know that the radius of a circle is equal to its diameter divided by two. So we will come in here and we will change the radius into d over two, and then we'll square it. We can simplify this a little bit. It would become pi times d squared over four. So this expression here will be substituted for the cross-sectional area of the copper rod. And then what we're gonna to try to do is solve for D. And that becomes our little algebraic challenge. And we could begin doing that by multiplying the bottom here by four, as well as the top. That's gonna to cancel out those fours down there in the denominator. And so we would have the resistance is equal to four rho L over pi d squared. Let's next multiply both sides of the equation by pi d squared. That will cancel that term out on the right-hand side. So now on the left-hand side, if we kind of scramble things, we'll have d squared times r times pi equals four rho l. Next, we can divide both sides by the term r pi. That will cancel them out over there. And then what we'll end up doing to get d squared is just square root both sides. So now we can see that D is equal to the square root of four rho L over the resistance times pi. Kind of a strange result, but that is indeed correct. We do have to look up the resistivity of copper. It's gonna have a different value. And if we look that up, it's right there, 1.6 times 10 to the minus eighth. That's what we're gonna use for the resistivity of copper. We do know the length also, that was 1.3. And then the resistance is the one that we found from part A. So let's plug everything in here. There we go, we've punched everything in to our calculators. We're gonna get a diameter of about 0 0.00460. And that's gonna turn out to be in meters. And we can verify that that turns out to be in meters if we look carefully here because the ohms will cancel there. 
and then we have in the numerator meters times meters, which is of course meters squared, but then we're also square rooting the meters squared. So basically the square root of meters squared would give us meters. So that is the correct answer to part B. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But if not, of course, no worries. Thanks for taking the time regardless.